Hi everyone, and welcome to another video on the Human Biology course. Today, we are going to talk about the heart. Before anything else, we need to have a look at the anatomy of the heart in order to understand how it functions, and it is more complex than you probably think. So let's take a look at this diagram. I know that from looking at it, it looks quite confusing, but let's split it into parts. Right now, let's talk about the two atria and the two ventricles, as well as the veins, arteries and valves. As you know by now, you have two types of blood, arterial blood and venous blood. The heart is divided into four parts, the two atria at the top and the two ventricles at the bottom. The ventricles are very muscular, especially the left ventricle, which pumps blood to the whole body. Also note that the vessels that deliver blood to the atria are always veins, and the vessels that come out of the ventricles are always arteries. The valves are like doors, which detect when blood can pass from one side to the other, and when it can't. They do this by sensing the pressure that blood puts on them when the atria become full, which then prompts them to open up so that blood can pass to the ventricles. Arterial blood is the blood that contains oxygen, as it has just left the lungs after the gas exchange. Think of it as clean blood. This clean blood only goes into the left side of the heart, the clean side. This clean blood enters the heart into the left atrium through the pulmonary vein, and then passes to the left ventricle through the mitral valve. This clean blood then leaves the left ventricle through the aorta, which is the largest artery in your body. If you think about it, it makes sense that the left ventricle is the most muscular and the aorta is the biggest artery in your body. The blood that passes through them is going to be distributed through the whole body. That's a hell of a lot of blood, which needs to be pumped with incredible strength to reach your whole body. So after the blood circulates through the body, it becomes deoxygenated and therefore it is called venous blood. This is because the oxygen is distributed through the body and carbon dioxide takes its place. So you can think of this type of blood as dirty to make it easier. This type of blood only goes to the right side of the heart. So this dirty blood then enters the heart into the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava and then passes to the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve. From there, the blood leaves the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery and travels to the lungs to be oxygenated again, restarting the whole cycle. And this is just one heartbeat, so the heart really is the hardest working organ in our body. This creates a cardiac cycle of movements which allow the blood to be circulated through the body. The first movement is a diastole, which is when the atria contract, opening up the valves and allowing blood to flow into the ventricles. Afterwards, there is a systole, which is where the ventricles contract, allowing the blood to flow out of the heart, whilst at the same time the atria are relaxing, letting more blood into them to prepare for the next cycle. So in summary, your atria contract while the ventricles relax, and this is a diastole. And then the reverse happens, the ventricles contract and the atria relax, giving rise to a systole. Now let's have another look at that heart diagram. This time, let's talk about the electrical components of the heart. And these are the sinoatrial node, or SA node, the atrioventricular node, or AV node, the bundle of His, and the Purkinje fibers. First, the SA node, located in the right atrium, generates an electrical stimulus, which activates the atria to contract and let blood pass to the ventricles. The AV node then comes into action and sends a signal to the ventricles to contract and then it goes back to the SA node for the atria to contract again, so the cycle restarts. And this happens for every heartbeat. Without these electrical impulses, your heart would simply stop working. 
the AV node branches out into what is called the bundle of His, which divides into two branches, one goes to the right ventricle and the other to the left ventricle. Each ventricle has Purkinje fibers, which contain specialized cells which help transmit the electrical impulse from the bundle of His into the ventricles. The electrical impulse then starts out at the SA node, which makes the atria contract. The second impulse starts at the AV node, traveling into the bundle of His and then through the Purkinje fibers and into the ventricles, allowing these to contract. The SA node is also called the pacemaker of the heart. This is why when you hear of an older person having heart problems, they usually have a pacemaker put in, because their SA node does not transmit the electrical impulse properly, therefore they need a man-made version of it to do it instead. These can be implanted in the person for a number of reasons, either as a treatment or as a precaution. For example, if a person's heart rate becomes unstable, either too fast or too slow, or a mixture of the two, then a pacemaker can be implanted to regulate the heart's activity. Let's talk about heart disease now, and to start this section, we will begin by talking about the formation of plaque in our circulatory system, and what the consequences of this are. Plaque, as you may have heard, is the buildup of fat, cholesterol and other substances on the arteries. This plaque is called an atheroma in medical terms. The increasing buildup of this mix of substances gives rise to the disease called atherosclerosis. Your arteries are meant to carry that clean oxygenated blood from your heart to your whole body. The inside of the arteries is called the endothelium, which is quite smooth to allow the blood to flow easily. When atheroma starts settling in those arteries, it starts narrowing them and making them hard. The best way to think of it is by imagining drinking something out of a straw. When you're drinking something very liquidy, it's quite easy and the liquid quickly goes up the straw without any issues. Now if you think about drinking something with a very narrow straw, and if the liquid contains bits which end up stuck in that straw, you can imagine how hard it would be to drink that. That is what happens when people develop atheroma. It is much harder for the blood to flow through the arteries. When this buildup begins, it gives rise to a disease called angina pectoris, which is the initial stage of coronary heart disease. At this point, the blood flow is disrupted, but it still continues. If the condition develops further, and the arteries become more clogged, this is then called unstable angina, which is when the heart really starts to struggle, and the blood flow becomes even more disrupted. At this point, pieces of the plaque can dislodge from the arteries and then clog up other arteries even more. If an artery becomes fully blocked with plaque, this gives rise to a myocardial infarction or most commonly known as a heart attack, which can be deadly if not treated promptly. Other problems which can result from atherosclerosis include aneurysms and thrombosis. An aneurysm occurs when the partially blocked artery wall becomes weak, causing it to bulge out like a balloon. If an aneurysm bursts, this could lead to serious problems and internal bleeding. Thrombosis occurs when your blood cells gather and form a blood clot, either due to disrupted blood flow or due to damage to the blood vessels. When these clots form, they can further restrict the blood flow and they can travel through the vessels and cause other problems. Deep vein thrombosis happens in the veins, as the name suggests, and it can lead to serious issues. These problems usually start developing as you become older, as the plaque builds up over time but deep vein thrombosis can occur also as a result of prolonged inactivity due to the accumulation of blood in certain places when you don't move around enough. Deep vein thrombosis can also occur during long-haul flights, as you stay still in the same position for hours in a row, 
and this is especially true for unhealthy people or people who've already started developing atherosclerosis. Unfortunately, because this is such a big subject, we will split the harp videos into two parts. I hope you have enjoyed the first part, and I will see you next week for the second part. As always, you can check out the whole course on our Patreon. See you next time!